now recording. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to now recording. Um, I'm Matt Pitt. With me today, I have Mr. Beckett of Crabs. Hey, man, how you doing? And also with me today, I have uh, Stardust. Hello. Hello. So I, I have the, the, the you know, I'm not going to make another couple joke. I did that last time when you were on. I'm not, <laughs> not going to do it again. Uh, so I have a few notes here about what we're about to be talking about. And our server, she's done a couple thumbnails for us. Her name's Tumbleweed. Uh, she actually went back. Who, uh, Stardust, who was the guy who was reacting, reacting to, like, uh, or reading the docs first? There's, like, a guy with glasses. Uh, Malcolm? Yeah, she was watching a lot of the Malcolm videos. And so mm-hmm. she sent me some notes. So I just wanted to read this. Uh, so this whole Xena and Poppy thing, right? Uh, there's some, mm-hmm. she's got some words with definitions here, just so we can understand everything. So FP equals favorite person or main bitch. Headmates equal alter brain roommates. Metamore equals partners, party, parter, rivals, <clears throat> according to Poppy. Uh, relationship anarchy is a type of polyamorous relationship where everyone chills and does their own thing, opposite of what Poppy does. Rape by deception, uh, a gold medal mental gymnastic winner for dumbest allegation, which uh, we'll get into that. Uh, and the summary for Poppy, real quick, is a trans gr- Poppy is a trans girl therapist, licensed professional counselor. Uh, LPC got fired after after job gave after job gave ultimatum that it was either work or social media. And they chose social media. Uh, she has DID, ADHD, BPD. Uh, one of the alters is a child. Uh, they have allegations of being manipulative, vindictive, and an overall creep from multiple people since 2022. Uh, complicit, active, and abuse of a disabled teenager, adult, financial, emotional, and food deprivation. Uh, harassed Noah, one of their one of their polycule ex girlfriends, who also has DID into meeting IRL after Noah had flatly said they didn't want to meet and they didn't love them anymore by schizo message him until they gave in. Fucked in a hotel, got dumped after, and is claiming rape by deception because they had consensual sex under the illusion and the relationship was going to continue. So they got, uh, they got uh, gifted, allegedly. Leaks show uh, complete opposite. One of uh, Poppy's alters, uh, Pepper, I think, is a child that started calling Noah their mom after the breakup. Poppy kept trying to guilt Noah by reminding them that they were abandoning an innocent child. And uh, last one here is Xena is black, blackmailed one of the accusers, Willow, into removing their allegations. They also are the main culprit of the abuse against Spawn, Poppy's child, not biological, but Poppy is named as the father in their birth certificate and has raised them since birth after their mom died in 2004. A lot of restrictions, food, bathroom use, verbal abuse, starvation, etc. Uh, Spawn has PD, POTS, uh, po- postural tachy, uh, tachycardia syndrome, is when your heart rate increases very quickly after being up or lying down, can cause fainting, exasperated by long periods of standing up, heat, and lack of food, all things they experience because of Poppy and Xena, despite being an adult and paying for their rent with a trust fund from their mom's death. Okay, so that's like a little summary. I'm sure everyone listening is like, what the fuck's going on? So I'm gonna break this down real quick. So Poppy is, what I know Poppy as, is when Tipster was retweeting all the uh, trans goth mommies or whatever, he retweeted mm-hmm. he retweeted one named, named Poppy, which uh, Bo Blacks noticed and tweeted out, Tipster, you have a wife. Why are you liking horny posts from other people? Which this, the, the, the Poppy post was the horny post he was liking. And Poppy uh, screenshotted this and said, hey, everyone, I need this tweet mass reported for harassment. The comments are filled with people misgendering me, attacking my identity and ignoring my sexuality just so they can attack another YouTuber. So that's how I know Poppy. Uh, Stardust, you've been doing an insane amount of research on live streams about Poppy and Xena. I've given a little summary. But we can go into a little bit more detail out. How did you first like uh, approach this topic? So I first approached this topic when I I came across the document. The first document I came across was the document created by Spawn and by and was helped uh, in creation by somebody named Milena, who is an ex of Poppy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I read through this document, this Google document um, that kind of documented Spawn's like last year or so of living with Poppy and Xena. Now, to give some background on who Spawn is, Spawn is basically the child of Poppy since birth, like you said. Mm -hmm. Um, Poppy met Spawn's mother when Spawn was 
basically when when pop when Spawn's mother was pregnant with with like Spawn. three months pregnant, right? Is what I think mm-hmm, I something like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um and they they stayed together. Um, Spawn's mother gave birth. Um, then when Spawn was about four years old, Spawn's mother was involved in a freak accident with a horse. Um, the horse got spooked by a dog, threw Spawn's mother off, um, and Spawn's mother died. Okay. Um, so since then, the uh, legal guardian of Spawn has been Poppy. Um, Poppy, uh, since then, has had multiple partners um, throughout this the you know the years of raising Spawn, um, and uh, basically things kind of started to get worse when Xena came into the picture. And Xena is Poppy's main partner, basically. When uh, when um, did Z- when did Xena come into the picture? Like, how old was Spawn at that point? Um, I think Spawn was around eighteen. So, okay. yeah. So, so Spawn was you know an adult by then, but it's still you know uh, people still want guidance from their their parental figures around that age, uh, even into their twenties and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's still not like a, a particularly good situation because Spawn. Also, on top of having POTS, was physically disabled in some sort of way. I, I don't know exactly how it's unspecified. Um, so Spawn, Spawn didn't, wasn't only having POTS. Spawn also is autistic, um, also has OSDD, was diagnosed with OSDD. Um, what, and what, what's OSDD? So OSDD is... OSDD. Um, is yeah. So let me uh, pull up the thing here other specified dissociative disorder um so it's not as severe as did um and for a while poppy was claiming that she had did but uh now she claims that she has osdd as well um and so uh so spawn has um a whole bunch of things going on right and it's also on top of it all physically disabled in some sort of unspecified way we don't know the details um and they don't have a car um, we know that, uh, w- you know, being up for uh, prolonged periods of time can make them dizzy, make them pass out. And during this whole time that they are living with Poppy and Xena, they start having only like very restricted access to the bathroom, to the kitchen, to um, to like common living areas. Um, and Xena basically finds any reason under the sun to go off on spawn i personally think that xena was threatened by spawn in some sort of way which wouldn't surprise me given that poppy has hit on people younger than spawn um spawn is currently 23 24 Mm -hmm. um poppy has hit on people as young as like 18 um so um, so that's kind of like the what I get from the situation. So the way that I got into this was was reading this document, um, the Spawn document. And as I continue to read through it, like there's no like there's no physical abuse in it, but it's very clearly like an emotionally abusive and verbally abusive and very controlling environment. Mm-hmm. They have their child basically writing full fucking logs. For chores that they do, they have they're offloading all of these chores onto Spawn. They're going in on Spawn for not having a job, even though Xena has never had a job in the entire time that they have lived with Poppy. Um, and Xena seems to not do any chores. Um, so, <clears throat> so that's kind of um, that's kind of like what I was getting from this. And and. You can look at the kind of text message exchanges between Spawn and Poppy and Xena. And Xena is an insufferable bitch for like basically any interaction that you see. Right. And then the other logs that you see in that document are basically Spawn venting. And mm-hmm. um, and I, I usually, you know, we don't look at like venting as like um as like evidence uh, of any sort except for documentation right so mm-hmm. it what what that serves is like we this person is documenting what they're going through so it's there um and uh you can see there's even a, a part where spawn breaks down after xena berates them verbally berates them and says that they're a bad person and spawn talks about how 
I miss when my mom was nice to me. Um, and Spawn also, Jesus. you know, probably the most heartbreaking part of that document. And this is like really what like it triggered me um, and made me like go gung ho on this topic is when Spawn is venting to a friend and saying, I'm so I'm so mad at my dog and I know it's not my dog's fault, but I'm so mad that they treat the dog better than they treat me. <laughs> oh, OK. Poor yeah. Fuck. Uh, well, the thing okay. I under the thing I see from this uh, and um, the small yeah. amounts I've taken in is like it's really weird how it's like the whole family is really like like connected to this online world with Discord and you know you have I guess they're are they both mothers uh or like Poppy and Zena are they a Zena considered a woman or are they like Zena is like trans masculine but like goes by they them pronouns <clears throat> okay yeah and so so yeah they're all connected in this weird like online world and then it's it's like this is now it's like the family has been as, exposed all of their secrets are exposed and it's, it's like it's like discord screenshots it's google docs yeah. it's, you know it's it's so weird that's like your irl family is now part of a uh, online drama on the internet um yeah i i just i don't know <laughs> it's just it's so well, insane here's the thing it wasn't initially um when when spawn left spot like spawn left and they left out of a window right they basically they got their luggage um they left out of a window and that was that um and it took some tracking down i guess by other people to find spawn and get all of these screenshots and put this all together um but yeah it is they're terminally online um next level right, right. like like get some fucking hobbies right so yeah <laughs> Well, yeah, it's uh, and like Poppy and Xena, they've been how long have they been content creators for a few years now? And what were they? Yeah. Uh, they were Emily, Emily Orchard or Lily Orchard. Beckett? Lily Orchard. Yeah, Lily Orchard. They, they associated with that um, because yeah. I think initially they had gone after Lily Orchard. Now they're fine with Lily Orchard because Lily Orchard is defending them. Um, but yeah, they basically run initially the YouTube channel was called Trans Girl Therapist, I believe. And mm -hmm. then Xena felt left out. So they turned it into Xena and Poppy Wholesome Degenerates. And um, and basically they they do streams and videos where the two of them sit there and Poppy does like 90 percent of the talking. Xena mm -hmm. is probably the most dull, boring person I have ever seen on a stream. Um, it's it, like no personality, <laughs> like no, like unbelievable, you know, like, um, uh, so yeah, they come from the same type part of the internet that, that, uh, people like Vosh and Demon Mama do. And mm -hmm. if you look at Poppy's early stuff, you can see her very clearly trying to just straight rip off of Demon Mama, right? Trying to yeah. just completely rip her aesthetic and what she does. And it's kind of sad. It's kind of pathetic. Um, but uh, yeah, then then they kind of like evolved past that. Vosh has never acknowledged their existence except for one time where they paid for a super chat, five dollars to get Vosh to give Poppy a happy birthday wish. That's it. Um, otherwise, I think it's pretty telling that Vosh wants nothing to do with these people. And that's saying something. Well, do you know what their so. what their take was during the whole Vosh uh, horse uh, lolly? Thing? Oh, they, they simp for him so hard. They simp for right. him so hard. So they were defending him up and down. So they were like team tipster, team Keffles. Are they cool with Keffles still or is that? I don't think they're cool with Keffles anymore. Oh, interesting. So I wonder yeah. what tipster thinks of them now. I think okay. what has happened ever since all of these documents have come out and multiple exes have spoken out is that um, most of the people in their sphere have decided to, like, not be associated with them any longer. Mm hmm. Yeah. So uh, I, uh, so Poppy, they have so they have o ODD now, not DID. It's OSDD. OS yeah. It's Jesus Christ. Christ. Fucking Christ. <laughs> Other <laughs> specified dissociative disorder. And what's funny about that is that. They back when um, Spawn, Poppy's child, had a Tumblr before they deleted it um, of course. because Poppy threatened them. Um, uh, somebody had asked anonymously to Spawn, um, 
like uh like does does poppy actually have the id or osdd and like what what's going on with that do you have osdd and basically what spawn says is that like they were actually diagnosed with osdd then poppy gaslit them into thinking that they didn't actually have it and then started claiming that she had osdd so Wait, they, it's, yoinked, um, so they yoinked her diagnose the the diagnosis <laughs> Their kids' yeah, diagnosis, like, no, yeah, I have this, and here it. are all my all my altars. Uh, what's the, yeah. so, so like they have we all can these go altars. into the altars, yes. yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yes, let's okay, yeah. So Poppy, okay, Poppy is not uh, Poppy's trans, right? But not mm-hmm. a good representation of the community, and obviously, in is in. Uh, th- th- I have to stress this that. They they are not a good representation of the trans community, and if anything, um, Poppy preys upon the tra- most vulnerable people within the trans community because these are people who don't have family around them. Um, mm. They're people who are usually going to have been abandoned by family or don't have family around them, also who have some mental problems going on. Um, they market, uh, Poppy and Zena market their community as a safe space for people with all sorts of different like um, issues going on, right? Um, and especially for people who are marginalized. And so Poppy uh, herself identifies as plural, um, and basically that has to that goes with the OSDD uh, claim, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she has four headmates, including herself. So the headmates are Poppy, Penny, Pepper, and Peppermint slash Sentinel. Sentinel is supposed to be like the secret, like. Um, the secret one that that like protects them all or whatever. So wait, say, say, never... say the names again. Say the names. Yeah. Poppy. Poppy. Penny. Penny. Pepper. Pep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is this? Was this a fucking a, a, a late night show on, or an early Saturday morning show on UPN, bro? Like, like what is four stages? <laughs> well, at, least, at least at least her co-hosts have to show up. <laughs> it's like it's like yeah, it's like true uh, well yeah they're always there right they're always yeah. there uh no with the penny and the all right so i'm just picturing like penny poppy and pepper like sitting in the kitchen like you know having like fun hijinks on the cartoons or whatever cartoon show and then like the sentinel person's like in the basement like doing weird shit like that's um, in my i would head, say in my... peppermint's probably like peppermint's actually like in I one of the cabinets in oh, one okay. of the cabinets and just like peeks out every now and then you know they're hiding in the cabinet <laughs> hiding yeah. from the trauma <laughs> <laughs> Well, they claim that Peppermint or Slash Sentinel is like um, this protective personality, but every single time we've seen uh, Poppy kind of lash out at somebody, she blames it on her uh, on Penny, Penny fronting. So I can give you like a little rundown. Each one of these, each one of these, uh, these, these headmates, by the way, has Mm -hmm. their own persona. Okay, just so you know, dude, I think they're faking this. I mean, come on, uh, really ridiculous. Okay, if I if I'm gonna give you my personal opinion, yeah. my personal opinion is that these are all role playing characters, and she has adopted them as headmates, uh, like for fun or whatever. Um. So, okay, Poppy is like the main personality that fronts. She's part. Uh, her persona is like part hyena, part succubus. Um, <laughs> which is interesting because Poppy, her gender identity apparently is like succubin. Well, I don't know what that what means. Is that, a gender that, identity? Identity? that is a gender identity. So I'm a, de- I'm a demon from hell who likes to like have sex with people and kill them. Like, what, what does that mean? Okay, okay. So <laughs> here from the LGBTQIA wiki, succubian or succubus gender is a xenogender and often neurogender r- related to succubi. Those that identify as succubian may have a gender that has feminine and seductive energies. I don't think Poppy has an ounce of seductive energy in her, but okay. This term is intended to be those with sexual trauma and or hypersexuality. At least the hypersexuality part goes. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I don't see anything seductive, but okay. You know, you, you, you do you, boo. Um <laughs> Dude, um, they, 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 I don't think they're seductive. They look like a retarded cyberpunk character. Like that's yeah. that's all. I, that's all I can kind of see them as. Like yeah. I don't yeah. see any suggest. Like look into those eyes. You can't. I don't see anything. There's nothing there. It's just. Yeah. It's just. It's just nothing. It's blank. It's. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just yeah. So you know, um, Poppy 
her fursona, okay, remember half hyena, half succuban, um, has a pseudo penis because you know hyenas notoriously their females have pseudo penises. What is um, a pseudo penis? What does that mean? Okay, so like <laughs> like in actual reality, hyenas, spotted hyenas have um the female hyenas have uh, pseudo penises. Um, uh, I don't know how it works, but I guess she wanted that for her main altar, I guess. So, um, and she's got, she's got like artwork done on a lot of these characters. Uh -huh. So just so you know, they're out there. They're very not safe for work. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I wanted to roll back slightly because I, I think something interesting yeah. that was said was uh, just a couple of things. Like you, you said that the way Poppy presents community is like a safe space, which uh, for like vulnerable people, which is interesting because that's sort of what happened with Lily Orchard as well uh, when mm -hmm. she went through the whole rebrand thing. So it's uh, interesting to see a kind of comparison. But going back to the way kind of the rest of the sort of leftist community has reacted, I know a lot of people don't want to fucking touch it. Uh, there was a drama involving uh, these two like months ago. I don't know whether it was the start of this or this like came out of uh, that. But I have noticed that people like Gay Fesh, who's like uh, in the Dean, was at least was part of Dean Mama's circle and has quite a notorious reputation. Uh, in Twitch poll, Gayfesh been... is a uh, uh, orbiter in like the Keffels community who like flags shit down, right? Yeah, and there's like okay. a load of other accusations towards them, but they've been like going really hard, from what I understand, on Xena yeah. and Poppy. That like they have, yeah. Um, he's been very, very outspoken about Xena and Poppy being pretty predatory and being pretty abusive. And I have to give him props for that because uh, everybody else in that community wants nothing to do with it. They don't want, <laughs> they want nothing to do with uh, Poppy and Xena. Um, so. Yeah, they won't even talk about yeah. it. It's, it's really weird. It's kind of like the Vosh thing. Like lots of people just didn't talk about it. Like, oh, yeah. we'll just ignore this. It's yeah. like, yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. And honestly, I would say that this, this actually, in my opinion, might be worse than, than, uh, than the Vosh stuff. Because this is somebody who is like actively um, being predatory towards people in their community who they know are vulnerable, who they know are impressionable, who are generally like on the younger side. And um, and they use like therapy language to take advantage of them. So I think that the part of the reason why I've been going so hard on this is because the longer I look at this, the worse it looks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, who are going to be the most vulnerable, susceptible people to this kind of behavior? It's going to be um, people of marginalized communities like the trans community um, who disproportionately has, uh, ha you know, have been disowned by their families. So yeah. um, they don't have people around them to say like, hey, watch out for this, you know, hey, watch out for these people. A lot of these people that you see that are involved in this had trouble family family lives. If you look at like the exes of Poppy. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really disgusting. Um, you, but if we want to get back to to the, the altar, sorry, what did you want to <laughs> <Yeah>. say? <laughs> no, I was going to say, do you think it's like a kind of like a cult mindset where they uh, try to attract the most like. Uh, uh, people that have had rough lives, bring them in, take advantage of them somehow, emotionally, whatever you want to call it. Uh, is it like the, the? Is there like a cult like mindset? Do they how how they attract people? I, I think I think so. I mean, just the very fact that they even the way they ran their household with Spawn was very mm -hmm. cult like because they would make Spawn write up like fucking essays about like the chores that they were doing or whenever they failed to do a chore, um, and they would make them write like write up all sorts of shit like uh, do a spreadsheet for like apartments they were looking at and like write up a whole bunch of stuff like it was just crazy that's the kind of stuff that they do at troubled youth centers right like troubled youth schools where they set the the schools that come and like abduct kids in the middle of the night mm -hmm. um that are rampant with abuse um those those types of those types of places those are the people that do that kind of shit where they require logs from every person um about everything yeah, so. gotcha. So back to the altars, all right? Because that's probably the most interesting thing. A part of this, like, yeah. they think there are like hyena people and like, like yeah. So Poppy, each single one has a different, um, different like persona, right? Mm -hmm. So Poppy, um, is basically the main front, right? Has a mm -hmm. penis, um, 
Also, um, inner demon causes color changes on the front section of her hair or whatever. Um, uh, you know, because she's part hyena, heart, part succubus, right? Um, right? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Roll, yeah, yeah. roll for charisma. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, what the fuck? This is D&D. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, she's uh, yeah, it's just it, it's nuts. Um, and we can go into like the specific kinks that are listed for Poppy later as well. Um, then we've got Penny. OK, OK. Penny is like a young um, a young girl. Um, a tiger shark hybrid, uh, uh, if you can believe it, right? Like, how the fuck does that work? So, Penny is supposed to be like a tiger shark hybrid. Um, she has like glowy stripes. Um, her bodily fluids are supposed to be psychoactive upon ingestion. Or physical <laughs> contact. <laughs> yes. We're like, like, oh, I just had sex with this uh, tiger shark. Uh, I feel really weird right now, guys. What's going on? Like, is that? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how well, she gets here, around here. the uh, drugging of people. Right? Yeah. Basically, <laughs> yeah. It's like, like my, it's like she's saying, like, my bodily fluids can, like, roofie you, basically. It's not um, right, no, according... it's, it's that I pissed on you. That's, that's what it was. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> according to the lore here, um, it says the, the bodily fluids that are psychoactive upon ingestion or physical physical contact they can induce euphoria and hallucination <laughs> feelings slash experiences of love hair closeness and sexual arousal they are also bioluminescent no um, babe you don't understand my cum is a sedative that's why you passed out <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, uh, shit. it's uh, uh and then it, just just so just so you know origin heavenly host heaven paradise etc so apparently this tiger shark fell from heaven um landed what? in <laughs> so yes. wait so so the the hyenas from hell because they're a succubi and then the tiger shark's heavenly yes it's like a um, this... <laughs> what do you mean by fell from hold on i mean, i feel like i'm i'm asking dumb questions <laughs> did it, did when it hurt say... when the tiger shark <laughs> fell from heaven <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean like in what context did this occur? Like they've got like fucking lore behind them. How did they end up inside Poppy's Every fucking single head? one of them has lore. Every single one of them has lore. Not only did they fall from heaven, they fell into Thailand, and they are like a Thai lady boy at the same time. So, um, uh, so they're like a sex what? worker Thai lady boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and which is wild to me because not only are they a tiger shark with like roofy, um, you know, fluids, right? Uh, that fell from heaven. They're also a Thai lady boy, which means they're like a different, you're a different, you have an altar that's a different ethnicity. Like that's fucking weird, right? Like, <laughs> like, you know, I, I never thought, I never thought I'd say this, but I feel sorry for the trans community because I'm sure there's some like normal trans people who are like, I just want to be the different gender. I want to look like the opposite gender. I, I just want to live my life as the oh, opposite they hate, gender. They hate, and, and they got to, they got to deal with these people that are like, actually, I, 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 I'm not only the opposite gender. I'm like, uh, I, I'm a little of both. Also, I think I'm a tiger shark that fell from heaven. I'm also a hyena who's also like a, a succubus. And, and then also like, uh, I'm also a kid. Like, it's like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh location of fall is off the coast of Thailand. Like, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. So I will tell you, um, I like all of my trans friends, like hate these two with a burning passion <laughs> um they hate xena and they hate poppy um and just to move on to the next one um there's less lore for pepper but basically what we know about pepper is that she's a spider tiger hybrid that's somewhere between the ages of 12 and 14 years old okay say that one more time please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pepper is a spider tiger hybrid that is uh -huh. somewhere between 12 to 14 years old so it's like i have to like i have to have you say it twice because it's just like it's it literally sounds like gibberish at this point yeah <laughs> a 14 yeah. year old tiger shark hybrid person yeah yes can you imagine and getting then, fucking therapy from this person oh that was like, one of the first things i said can you imagine being mandated by fucking court to go to a therapist <laughs> and you sit down and this is the person that you sit across from i i think i'd uh 
how do I say this? I I, I think I would uh, do something very drastic. <laughs> I think I would I would run away and I do something very drastic because all hope is lost if that's my therapist. Yeah, no, so. yeah, I mean, I'm just saying I, I was that was one of the first things I said to my chat. I was like, guys, imagine you come from like a horrible family life. Right. And and you just have been ordered by like the court to go and see this therapist. Right. And you sit down and this is the person that you get. And they start telling you about your fucking uh, their fucking <laughs> altars, you know, like. God, Your Honor, dude. can you mandate me a new therapist? This person's <laughs> fucking nuts, please. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll t- actually, I'll go to prison. How about that? I'll take, I'll take yeah. the, I'll take prison yeah. over this. Um, Jesus. Can we? Uh, then, so, oh, yeah. no, keep going, keep going, keep going. If you got more, keep yes. going. <laughs> I, look, last one, last altar is peppermint, also okay. known as fentanyl, and this is the one we know the least about. Um, we just know that they are like the protective personality, um, and so just so you know. Even though they're the protective personality, like we like most of the time when Poppy freaks out on somebody or like blows up on somebody, she blames it either on on one of her alters, usually Penny. She blames Uh it on Penny or she blames it on her BPD or her OSDD. She basically blames everything that she anything bad she does. It's not her fault because Mm -hmm. Penny decided to front or because my bpd you know does this so yeah it just mm-hmm. i i see that a lot with people like this where they just really use the mental illness as an excuse mm-hmm. on everything and, and you... anybody else's triggers anybody else's mental illness is not an excuse for their bad behavior or bad coping with whatever yeah uh, I, you, you know, this reminds me of a, a movie called Split, right, where this guy has different personalities, but one of the personalities is actually like really dangerous and like has super strength and he goes around killing people because of it. I just imagine like that's pop. That's poppy. Like one of the personalities like, uh oh, here comes Sentinel. Ah, like, <laughs> like she's like, yeah. t- but, but instead of like walking around beating the shit out of people, she's just typing out on a keyboard like horrible things to people. And then she wakes up the mm-hmm. next morning like, no, 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 you don't understand. That was that was Sentinel. That wasn't me. I'm a normal, yeah. I'm a normal person. Yeah. I'm just a yeah. little girl. I'm a little girl card <laughs> uh, yeah. shark. Uh, and by the shark. way, um, just to correct one thing that you'd said earlier, Pe- mm-hmm. um, Pepper, the one that's like 12 to 14 years old, mm-hmm. um, she was calling No Flake her mom while they were in a relationship as well. Um, right. So there, that there is that, and um, and No Flake, I think, actually legitimately does have like OSDD or DID. Because mm-hmm. it seems like No Flake, um, No Flake, the only time No Flake only has like one altar, right? And mm-hmm. the only time that comes out um, that we've seen is when Poppy is verbally berating No Flake. Um, that mm-hmm. is the only time, and it's uh, like, yeah, it, it very clearly looks like a trauma response to me. So yeah, okay, well, fair. Well, uh, well, speaking of Noah, like, can we go over this whole rape by deception thing? Do you know anything about yeah. this? Like what, what yeah. happened there? What's the rape by deception? So basically what happened is no flake and um, here, let me pull it up because I have a whole bunch of notes here. Uh, <laughs> no flake. Uh, it's so hard. Here's the thing about this drama is that even if there was no allegations of abuse in this, this would still be fucking crazy to cover because there's just like who the fuck is this person that has like four fucking altars and like they're all furries um but yeah um so i think that no flake and poppy um started dating on september 3rd and they were together for about 3.5 months um and as you know poppy on top of everything else is polly um, uh, so she's into poly relationships, but she's not mm-hmm. fit for them. Um, so no flake basically, um, starts dating Poppy, um, and starts becoming part of their community and becomes friends with Cena. And no flake is somebody who's also, who has a background with a lot of trauma. Um, and no flake is somebody who's also engaged in poly relationships. One right. of Poppy's things that Poppy says like she needs from relationships and one of her boundaries is basically she can't be exposed to a partner of a partner because she Mm -hmm. gets really jealous and really possessive. 
sounds like to me maybe you're not fit for these, <laughs> these well, yeah, like, relationships polyamory yeah. is like i i'm i'm with you but i'm also with this person and you're also with that person and we all we're all together in this like we're all in yeah, this and together I, maybe i'm not with them but i'm 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 chill with it i'll be okay yeah, you know yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah. have an understanding that we're all going to be in different yeah. relationships and what you're saying is poppy will do this but get jealous of the other partner uh creating mm -hmm. drama within their little is it a, called a polycule yeah. Polycule? Is yeah. that what it's called? Yeah, basically. <laughs> so so um so that's where the term metamor comes in. And Poppy uh very uh, she says over multiple streams and stuff that she can't run into metamors, they give her a lot of trauma, whatever the fuck that means. Um, and that she gets really possessive and really jealous. And you can see this kind of play out on different Twitter interactions where You'll see No Flake and one of No Flake's partners flirting openly on Twitter. And then mm. Poppy will start replying and saying and, and getting jealous. And then she requests No Flake to tell her other partner to block Poppy, um, which is like, OK, why don't you just block them yourself? Right. Mm -hmm. Like um, and so. um. So that happens and then some miscommunication happens and basically Poppy gets really mad at No Flake because No Flake quote tweets a like blocked person. And for a second, when that shows up, like when she quote tweets it, you can still see the quote tweet underneath um, mm -hmm. only for a second before it like before it says that you can't see it. And Poppy yeah. gets super triggered, even though she only saw it for a second, this quote tweet from a metamorph. And she basically blows up on No Flake in DMs. Um, and she, No Flake goes to work and Poppy keeps sending her essays and essays and essays. And, um, and I guess this isn't the first time it's happened. Um, and so Poppy makes No Flake choose between her and her other partner. And No Flake has been with the other partner for longer, but No Flake still chooses Poppy. Um, right. And so, like, already that's like, this is not, this is not a poly relationship. This is, you want a harem. Like, you don't want a poly relationship. You want a harem. You don't want your partners to have other partners. Yeah. It's very yeah. clear. Yeah, that's all. So, he wants, yeah. or she wants the goth mommy. She wants them all to herself, basically. Yeah. The, the yeah. trans goth mommy. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Poppy is pansexual, but yeah. Um, so, so that happens. Then um, another instant, another thing happens over Twitter where Poppy stumbles upon, again, a metamor and um, Poppy gets triggered and blows up on No Flake again. And No Flake, um, after a certain point, is like, I can't do this. I don't know if I can do this relationship. Um, and Poppy, uh, No Flake blocks Poppy on uh, social media and a whole bunch of other places. And then Poppy starts tweeting some melodram melodramatic shit. And No Flake, um, you know, is like keeping to herself and all that, but talking to Xena. And Xena eventually convinces No Flake to give Poppy another chance. Mm -hmm. And then her and Poppy start talking again. And by this point, Poppy and Xena have already scheduled around Christmas time to go and visit No Flake in her town. And No Flake is saying, you guys shouldn't come. Um, I don't know if I can handle this. I don't think I can handle this relationship. I'm too traumatized. Um, and I'm, you know, basically she's... She, the constant berating and all blowing up on her um, for things that like she didn't even do basically right. um, makes her just uh, really wears her down. And she's like, I, I don't think I can do this. I'm disassociating um, because she's got a lot of trauma and all of that. Um, so Poppy begs and begs and begs her to give her another chance um, and to let them visit. and. In the meantime, Xena is also begging, well, not begging, is trying to convince Snowflake to let them uh, visit. And over, it, it's like a whole night. It's like something like 12 or 18 hours of both of mm -hmm. them just like constantly 
um, messaging her until they wear her down and until No Flake says, yes, you can come visit. Um, would would and this be then, the first time they actually physically interacted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. And then, uh, then No Flake um, continues to say, like, um, it's going to be a really small chance of things um of, of things being fixed the, this chances are very slim um so she makes that really really uh well known mm -hmm. and then poppy starts asking you know i i love you do you love me and then no flake says i don't know and then poppy um says can you try saying you love me and see if you feel anything and then no flake tries it and says that she feels nothing and Poppy is just continually like messaging and messaging um, essays upon essays. I can't tell you. I was so tired after reading all of this. <laughs> up. Um, um, and then, uh, and by the way, just, just so you know, through all of this, no flake has been pretty clear throughout all of this, that she is asexual. She only engages in sexual activity because it makes her partners happy. Um, right. So then, the time comes they visit on christmas um and no flake has been disassociating the the days prior because she's been so stressed out about all this they they visit um no flake goes and meets them at the hotel poppy and no flake hook up mm -hmm. um and then oh before i before I, I get to this part let me just say also Z while Xena and No Flake are talking, um, Xena says to No Flake, nothing bad is going to happen if you at least try. You know, just try. Mm. <laughs> and, Fuck. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. And so, um, so then they finally meet up. They go to the hotel. Poppy and No Flake hook up. And then No Flake says... I don't feel anything. I don't want a relationship. Basically the same thing that she's been saying. And mm -hmm. she leaves. And people don't focus on this part enough. But, you know, obviously when she's leaving, Poppy begs her to stay. Don't leave all of that, right? But I think the part that is really fucking crazy to me is that after she leaves, Poppy and Xena stay in that town for seven additional hours waiting begging no flake to come back um begging no flake to be in the relationship seven hours so they're just like <laughs> sitting there in town where they had a starbucks somewhere like texting i don't like, i have babe. no <laughs> idea where in town they are but they they stay there for seven mm -hmm. hours while poppy is doom tweeting and all of that um, join our polycule babe come on <laughs> you know you want this <laughs> yeah <laughs> finally they leave then over the next few days, Poppy starts tweeting out, I feel used. I, I can't believe, you know, we had this physical relationship and then we and then she decided to not be with me. Um, can't believe she used me for my body, all of that. And you can see over the few days that the narrative starts to change. So maybe, she starts do, maybe saying, they actually do have BPD then, because that sounds like someone with BPD would do. You know oh, I, mean? I don't doubt she has BPD. <laughs> yeah, I don't doubt she has BPD. I just yeah. think that she uses it as an excuse for everything. Yeah, I was I was um, doubting they had BPD, but now maybe like this yeah. whole favorite person thing. I doubt the OSDD. The yeah, I doubt I agree. the OSDD. Yeah, OSDD the just sounds like them role playing and creating characters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, go, continue. So, so yeah, um, over the next few days, you see. The narrative change and Poppy starts to say that I feel like I was used and she used my body and she um, and, and she deceived me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I talked to a friend and a friend said this might be essay by deceit. And then she starts to call it rape. And she starts to say that I, I, this was rape by deception. So she starts labeling this, this girl, this woman who's like in her early to mid twenties who right. hooked up with this other woman. Poppy is again, is like 42, 43 and is labeling, you know, this, 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 um, this no flake person has enters this relationship with, with Poppy for just like three and a half months and gets labeled a rapist afterwards. And it's not just that, She's labeled a rapist by Poppy. All of Poppy's followers start harassing her. Um, 
uh, a pretty well-known person named Annie Gallagher mm-hmm. um, writes an article called No Flake a Rapist um, and says like, oh, the left, the leftists are defending a um, defending a rapist or, or they're, you know, the, like the yeah. leftists are. Yeah. All of that. Um, who, and by the way, Annie Gallagher is problematic in her own right, but, um, yeah. And then, um, on top of it all, no flake hasn't legally changed her name yet. Right. And mm-hmm. she was going to name herself. She was going to give her the name herself, the name Haley. She hadn't gotten the chance to do that yet. What Poppy does is takes that name and associates that name Haley. Haley raped me. Haley is a rapist. So now Mm. No Flake can't name herself Haley because if anybody looks up her name online, it's going to come up that she's a rapist. Right. So she basically stole her name too, on top of it all. Um, What was uh what was the did uh what was uh the what was the out? What was there? How much outrage was there against uh, Noah during this? Um, I think people didn't know the full story until this document came out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that there, you know, I looked at the screenshots and there seemed like a decent amount of people who were like, um, being really aggressive towards Snowflake. Mm-hmm. You know, was there, her, was her there, pretty, was there yeah. any pushback towards uh, Poppy during this when the whole rape by deception um, thing was being put out? There was some pushback um, mm. because Poppy used an article to defend herself that was talking about how um, people have used the rape by deception argument against trans people um, mm. and that it shouldn't be used. And she was like, well, it's still defending my point. It's not. It's not because rape by deception. Um, this is a it, this is an argument that has been used against trans people. It's also something I could imagine somebody using in like a marital rape case, right? Like she lied about being in love with or or not being in love. She lied about wanting to have sex. She just had sex to placate me and therefore it's rape by deception. So I didn't really maritally rape her. She raped me or something like that. Right. Um, And in reality, like I feel like that, you know, that argument shouldn't be used unless in, in a really extreme case. Um, uh, and same thing, it's been used against, again, it's been used against trans people, you know, people who didn't know that somebody they were sleeping with was originally uh, one gender, and now they're different, right? Um, they're a different one. And whether whatever you feel about that, you can feel whether, you know, you think that's rape or that's not rape. It's just surprising to me that Poppy of all people, somebody who would probably be against that argument, is using that argument in this case. Yeah. yeah. Especially after, uh, also on top of that, pressuring no flake until she gave in into meeting them mm-hmm. how did so so what's the like let's go to put this what's what's the outcome now with the documents with things like no flake and everything because these are now, now this has been reframed poppy has like a community around her some people are still defending her um how's how's she managing to spin stuff like the no flake things she's basically gone on to say that all of these documents are out of context or they have faulty information or they're just straight up lies that's what she tweets um that's what she says and people in her community will still go along with that but for the most part the broader leftist community and the broader community that she was part of has disowned her nobody wants anything to do with her Mm -hmm. uh beckett i had a question for you this uh this has like uh this has connections to the art community, right? The art uh, community. What, 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 what's, that, what's that connection there with uh, Poppy and Xena and the art commentary community? So um, basically somebody came into the chat uh, while I was streaming and was like, hey, uh, you, you know Patch, uh, Patchwork Heart, who's got like a fairly long history with art commentary and was like, did you know that Patch was defending uh Xena and Poppy. I was like, I had no fucking idea. And they they threw me some tweets. Now now for reference, just real quick, for reference, Patch is the one that was like saying like, Leo Convoy, where you're you're supposed to be a father. You're we're yeah, a family. Yeah. You gotta you gotta take care of your kid. Even though so they're like it's all, all about this sacrifice, kids. all this shit. Yeah. yeah, it's all about sacrifice. Yeah, that that yeah. So um I found this pretty interesting and I was like, okay, I'm gonna cover it. And I did a stream uh, basically, like linking up a load of different things because I just found it funny how many things were interconnected. Yeah. When I did that, Patch messaged me and was like, "Hey, I see you're covering this, um, 
and I know you're covering Lily Orchard. Uh, do, do you want to talk about it? Because some people message me, and I was like, "Well, I didn't, I didn't reach out because I'd be covering the Zeta and Poppy stuff." I said this to Patch, and they were like, "Oh yeah, it's fine. I actually have more context for the Zeta and Poppy stuff." They literally said this to me in DMs. I was like, mm. "Awesome, based." So I brought them on, and uh, just had an interview with them. Uh, just basically getting their take. Now I have not followed this anywhere near as closely as Star has. So you know, I and I was, I was kind of just interested to see what the fuck was going on. Mm -hmm. But long story short, uh, at some point previously, Patch had ended up in Xena and Poppy's community and become one of their found family. Uh, they are, you know, their they, son. they were. Yeah, their son. They they refer to um, uh, Zena and Poppy as their like uh, Poppy as their mum. Um, all this shit, and had been defending them really hard. Uh, they came onto mine and uh, were like, "Well, what the fuck is this?" I'm like, "Well, you you said you had more context." They said they felt felt ambushed. I was like, "Well, you know, Zena and Poppy were on the thumbnail, but well, they felt you, you they felt ambushed by you." Yeah, and I was like, we but didn't they come this... on the stream? Yeah, I was like, I was pretty the one open. Who volunteered. Yeah, I was pretty <laughs> open with it because I didn't, I didn't reach out to them. It's real fucking weird. Um, so, anyways. so, so they reach out to you. They go in the chat. You, they come on stream. You ask them questions, and then they feel ambushed. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, this looks really bad. This looks fucking insane. I, I don't know the contacts. I, I say this to them. I'm like, I, I've got no fucking idea. Patch, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Tell me, because <laughs> we've just gone through this with Lyo, and that happens. They say they're going to go and talk to Poppy, uh, which it seems they did. Um, now, a couple of people weren't very happy with that interview, uh, which is fine because again, I, I didn't really have <laughs> the fucking context. Um, but importantly, this then, uh, like a week later, I've moved on. I'm doing other things. I'm not really touching this. Uh, Poppy quote tweets me which was interesting. Um, and this sort of exploded on Twitter um, mm -hmm. into people being like, oh, well, I can't believe uh, it's, it's fake leftist, Cope and Seethe, a very leftist name for a channel, yeah. uh, would do this to Patchwork. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I sort of quote tweeted them back. Uh, there was a bit of back and forth. And then this obviously just, caught the attention of everyone else. Um, Poppy ended up blocking me. Poppy blocked a lot of fucking people. Poppy blocked me for asking to come on to talk to Stardust. Yeah. yeah. yeah blocked a I, was gonna be a, I was going to be an unbiased moderator in this situation. <laughs> yeah, you're totally unbiased. Buddy. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. I, I mean, that is true. You don't yeah. really give a shit. Um, uh, so right, well, I mean, if, if stuff were to come up where it's like, uh, they think they're a, a tiger shark that uh, comes from heaven, I'd be like, what the, what the fuck? What the fuck's wrong with you? Probably. I probably would say that. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. yeah. Um, the like the pickup with this was really weird. Uh, Patch since then has like gone radio silent um, and kind of abandoned everything, uh, from what I can tell. But like Patch went tweeted out, "Well, oh, this is the last thing I wanted to happen." I was like, "Well, what did you think was going to happen if Poppy tweeted at me?" Like, because Poppy was like, oh, "You should be more responsible, and you should have come and talked to us." And I was like, "Well, why would I? You're a fucking crazy person." Because I didn't know yeah. much. But I yeah. knew enough that Poppy was fucking off at Rocker. Like and they, and they tried to pull that with me too, where they were like, You should have talked to us. Well, the reality is, is I followed them. And before I even covered them on stream, I had only announced that I was going to go over the stuff on stream. Before I even covered them on stream, they blocked me. So I didn't even have a chance to reach out to them. So I mean, like, you can't come at me for for not having reached out to you when you blocked me from doing so. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, but this is their defense. They tweet a lot behind a block, so they and so you're not blocked. They they want yeah. you guys to come to them privately and have a private conversation when all of this is like a public issue that you guys are not really like. You're not a part of the drama. You're just covering. It. So yeah, like, they're not oh, like you're not. They're not owed uh, people to come to them privately yeah. to talk about it, especially when it's. And all, I think it's like, no, yeah. It's, it's interesting because um, while Poppy is tweeting behind a block. Like people are like 
Stardust, is she threatening you? Because like, <laughs> like she's tweeted out a couple of things that are kind of sus. Like, um, like one was like this picture of of like an anime character with a gun, and then the other one is like an anime character with the Japanese word for like die in it uh, while talking about me. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. I think she's just being hyperbolic, but it is it is really fucking weird. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's completely, uh, it's completely, utterly fucking nuts. And these people, they should be committed, yeah. bro. They really should be committed. I, I don't understand yeah. how they work in mental health or anything like that. It is well, ridiculous. they don't anymore. They've been no. let go. But yeah, yeah. what happened yeah. with that? By the way, they so lost their basically, job. Basically, uh, basically the the I guess group that they were a part of, like Red Cedar Counseling or something like that, mm-hmm. um, was notified of all of this going on. And the boss, who apparently has been friends with Poppy for like 20 years, was like, hey, I can't have you on social media doing all this. So either don't do the social media stuff and you can stay. Or if you keep doing the social media stuff, I can't have you as part of this. And Poppy chose to keep doing the social media like self-immolation. So, uh, yeah. So they so it was like a voluntary thing, like, I'm going to keep doing this. And they were like, all right, well, you're fired. Good, have yeah. a great day you know <laughs> yeah so. and they had the nerve to call the the boss apparently somebody they were friends with for over 20 years mm-hmm. um abusive after that so yeah now poppy and xena have done a couple live streams about all the the google docs coming out and stuff what was their mm-hmm. it's summary of what like what was their response basically uh basically they um so probably the the most disgusting part of all this is when they they did the response to the spawn document um they basically said i know spawn's medical stuff i know that spawn recently met with their um with like their medical person um with their worker and that spawn recently has uh done this and done that Mm -hmm. um and uh and she also disclosed some like private health information that she shouldn't have known Mm -hmm. on stream about spawn uh, Spawn has said themselves that they did not sign any waiver to allow Poppy to have that information. Um, so they suspect that um, their login was still on the computer and the password was saved. So Poppy's been able to log in and get all of that information. Right. Um, also, on top of that, they threatened to sue Spawn for defamation. Um, which is like you're not going to get anywhere with that. The the nope. bar for being a, a public figure is really low, um, and the <laughs> bar for defamation is really high. So that's not going to go anywhere. But I do think Spawn, if they wanted to, has a case where this person has disclosed their medical information publicly without their consent. They also mm. said on the stream that um, that basically. Uh, Spawn was always a problem child, even when Poppy was when when they were growing up with Poppy, if Poppy had another partner and that partner told Spawn what to do, that Spawn wouldn't listen to the partner, which is like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Like Like a typical kid. Yeah. Yeah. Your kid is not going to listen to an adult in the house who they don't have a relationship with. Why would they? Um, And also, like, you know, one of the main things you're supposed to do as a parent is to restrict access to your child from other adults so what's Mm -hmm. going on there um and also poppy said that um that they they uh they've considered their discord children more like kids to them Mm -hmm. to them and xena um uh in the past six months those discord kids have been more kids to them than spawn has been in the last 10 years yeah, you see, they're active in the VCs. They're always liking my posts. Yeah. They're <laughs> which yeah. is like, yeah, your Discord kids. You don't have to deal with the hard part, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The if you look at the the and I I've talked about this before, but if you go back ten years, um, Spawn would have been thirteen, and that's when kids notoriously become hard to deal with, and yeah. you discover they have personality traits that you don't like. And you have to work with them through those personality traits and hope that they don't like adopt those as main personality traits. And even then you kind of come to the realization, okay, these, these people that are part that, that were once like, you know, mine, they are their own people now and they have their own personality and I can only do so much, but you still have a duty to love them and parent them and guide them. Um, And it seems like 
Poppy almost became resentful. And if you look mm-hmm. at Poppy's posting history on Reddit, it seems she is resentful of having um, a child. So, uh, so yeah, there, there's that. And um, I just found that really, really disgusting. Um, and also, she basically said Spawn's actual name out loud on stream, which Spawn oh. didn't want people to know. Yeah. Um, and somebody later on confronted her about it and was like, you, you literally re- like release like private information about your kid and threaten them on stream and, and told people that you didn't, um, you know, that you didn't consider them your child. And Poppy's response was, and I do it again. Ah, damn. Which is, Vicious. Uh, yeah. And then on top of that, um, they, they also say that, oh, Spawn has a history of being inappropriate to make guests feel uncomfortable spawn would wear underwear that was too small for them and then would like flash guests when they came over which is really interesting to me and a huge red flag because Mm when when a um when a child or even an adult child has a habit of doing that they learned it from somewhere right right and previous to this Poppy had been accused of flashing somebody who was a guest in their house. Um, the person's name is Dormiu. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dormiu was like freshly 18, came from a really rough um, home situation, had become friends with Zena and Poppy. And Dormiu went and stayed uh, with them for, um, I, I don't know how long it was, but it was over several days. And during Dormiu's stay over at their place, um, Poppy had tried to flash them two different times. And basically it became pretty evident that Poppy was trying to test the waters with Dormio mm-hmm. and see how they'd react. Dormio um, did not want to see Poppy like that. And when Poppy came out of like uh, one of the instances, Poppy came out of the shower and sat down and was completely clothless without, w- with the exception of underwear. And Dormio didn't realize at first because they were working on a computer. And when they looked up um, and saw that Poppy was topless, they mm-hmm. looked away. And Poppy kind of got a little bit like, uh, kind of laughed at them and was like, oh, grow up, they're just tits, you know? Um, and then Zena <laughs> asked what happened. Yeah. And Poppy said it, and Poppy told Zena what happened and they laughed about it while Dormu was like uncomfortable. It was very clear, like, to me, it seems like, you did that two times. You're mm-hmm. testing the waters with this person. And this person is 18. They're younger than your current child is. Right. Right. Um, and that brings me to another point where if you look at um, Poppy's F list, which I, I don't know if it's still up there. She may have deleted it. But if you look at her F list, um, one of the kinks that she seems into a lot is incest. And oh. two types of incest are listed here, parental and siblings. So I think it's interesting that she has the, this found family. She's got children, right? In quotation mm. marks in this found family. And she's into incest with siblings and with parents. And, um, and, and uh, yeah, she's got a history of flashing people um, who gotcha. are, you know, younger than her own kid. Um, so, yeah, um, one, Spawn didn't learn that from anywhere. Um, and, I, and I wonder where, where Spawn did learn it from. And two, um, Poppy has a long history of problematic behavior. And I would be very wary for anybody who thinks that they're part of a found family that is completely platonic um, mm. uh, with, with Poppy. I would say watch out. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Uh, it's all very yeah. like really weird. Let me ask you this: uh, how how culpable is Zena in all of this? Are they are they just a follower, or are they like the, Zena's incredibly culpable in this because Zena partakes in a lot of verbally abusing people. Um, uh, they they basically even though Z- Zena on stream or uh, I'm gonna call them ZZ because Zena is like to me a gendered name and it's hard for me to like stick to the proper pronouns. So mm-hmm. ZZ um and ZZ is what they nicknamed her or uh, them sorry. Um, gotcha. So Z uh, ZZ um basically even though they are like the most dull um person on stream and they barely contribute and they're most mostly like knitting every time they're streaming they just like 
you know, chime in once every 10 minutes to agree with Poppy. Mm. Um, off stream, ZZ is extremely controlling, incredibly mean, abusive, and manipulative. And ZZ is like this to their friends and has been that way to Spawn. And in fact, I would say that when it comes to the abusive environment that Spawn was in, uh, ZZ was behind the vast majority of it. And Poppy was just going along with it. Do you think there's ever a chance if Poppy keeps getting as much shit they're getting that Xena would like throw them under the bus and be like, oh, I was being manipulated as well. I'm not like this. I'm just, I was just following orders, you know, or something like that. I, I don't know, honestly, because they're so attached. Mm -hmm. They're attached to the point that they own a Twitter account together and a YouTube channel together and they stream together. They, they're like, a, they're so, mm -hmm. so attached. I don't know. I don't know. I think that the, both of them, they work together and victimizing themselves all the time and taking no responsibility and blaming everything on their mental illnesses or physical illnesses. Right. Okay. Well, um, it's just it's going to be interesting to see, like, how, do you think this is all going to die down and everything's going to go back to normal? Like, they're just going to start making content and then, you know, I think they're they going to try to keep making content. But I think that they are very tainted at this point, um, mm -hmm. uh, because, again, like while Poppy is hypersexual and, and manipulative and blows up on people, um, Xena might not be hypersexual, um, but Xena is very, very mean and very abusive and. There have been like multiple situations where Xena has been yelling at people, um, getting really aggressive um, and uh, being incredibly verbally abusive to people. So. Um, OK, well, uh, I look forward to see. Uh, are you are you planning on covering more uh, of this on your live streams? I'm probably going to cover more. I'm trying to branch out a bit, so I'm not <laughs> completely covering this, but. Um, I will be working, um, I think, on a video essay about all of this um, as well, um, because it's uh, I think it needs to be out there. So. Yeah. Well, I look yeah. forward to seeing more of your coverage of this. And uh, if you want to hear if you're listening to this being like, what the fuck is this? Go check out Stardust's channel. She's done multiple live streams going over all these documents and all these Google Docs and everything. Is there uh, anyone else you want to uh, say who's uh, covered this that you would recommend as well? Yeah, um, I, um, uh, God damn it, Malcolm. He's on YouTube. Um, Great name. He's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's uh, one of the people who's been mainly covering this as well as um, Luxander. I haven't seen Luxander's coverage, but I've heard that mm -hmm. their coverage is really good. Mm -hmm. So those are two people who have been covering this and they've been really thorough about it all. Also, and I also believe... Keldoge as well Keldosh. has been, yeah. yeah. And I think so. uh, I think uh, Chad Logic's dipped in a bit as well, covering it. Uh, yeah, I think he dipped in in the beginning, and then I think he's kind of moved on from it. Right. So, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again for coming on, Stardust Beckett. Do you have anything you want to add? No, uh, only that these people are fucking insane. Uh, even by you know connect <laughs> vague connections to the art community <laughs> standards. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it'll develop further but it is interesting actually fuck i will say this i think it is interesting with the vosh stuff and now this stuff kind of like there's this old guard of leftist twitch poll mm -hmm. uh that is really starting to like fucking evaporate into the ether they're kind um, of eating each other alive right in a way uh yeah yeah, yeah. um and it's it's kind of interesting to see that trend uh occur i'm not really sure how People pull out of a nosedive. If you'd said to me, like, I don't know, a year ago that Gay Fesh would be like burning Xena and Poppy to the ground, I'd have called you fucking crazy. Well, what I've been noticing is a lot of trans community, like people in the trans community are really starting to like fight each other. Like uh, Tipster and Calfels have been ostracized from a, like a majority of the trans community. These people, it's almost like there's a, it's, it, 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 there's like this idea like, wait, we're, we're trans, they're trans, but we're, we're like normal trans. They're, they're fucking yeah. out there well, and they're taking advantage of the like stuff. Yeah. The, yeah. the trans community isn't really, it, it's not a monolith, right? Um, yeah. You'll find trans people in the trans community from like all across the political spectrum. You'll even find mm. like pretty right wing conservative trans people, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But with the, the trans people that I interact with, um, the vast majority of them hate people like this. They hate people who, um, have alters, who claim to have alters, people who claim to identify as these other genders um, because it makes them look crazy. And mm -hmm. on top of them looking crazy because this is the representation that they get, 
Um, also, these people are not only uh, like making the trans community look bad, they're preying, they're actively preying upon the most vulnerable members of society and mm. the trans community, right? Who is going to be more vulnerable than a trans person who has bis been disowned by their family, right? Um, like growing up, all of us were told by our parents, like, you have to be careful. You have to watch out for these people. And even as I'm sure a lot of us grew into adulthood and uh, became adults and continue to live through adulthood, you still have family around you who are telling you like, oh, watch out for this person. Right. Or you mm -hmm. have a support system. A lot of these people who flock to these communities that Xena and Poppy have are Again, very vulnerable mentally because they've got, you know, trauma, a mix of trauma. They've got a mix of mental illnesses and they have been disowned by their families. And because of that, they don't have a support system around them to tell them to watch out for this or tell them that this person is being abusive to them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, there's there's a lot to be angry at there. Yeah. Uh, Beckett, how much uh, like I, I think a lot of this might have to do with like Tumblr, like back in the day, like real like. Yep. Uh, we really like Medicare was kind of right with this whole Tumblr thing. Well, I so surprisingly, a lot of the um, a lot of this originated the the um, a lot of the leaks on Poppy and Xena and a lot of them being called out has originated on Tumblr. <laughs> believe yeah. it or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the thing, right, with the whole uh, Poppy losing her job, you know, she chose the Internet over 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 her own job and that would make her bad with money those were also bad with money jada with a y strictly patrick sliggins gets a berry darcy evans ringtails stefan corbino joe vile channel has been deleted k hut cast pigeon salad echo tragedy brook a fresh brewski reynold hughes and mame if you want to be bad with money you can pay 14.99 a month get your name set up for every live stream every podcast episode can't afford that there's a beaver lover 9.99 a month gets you into priority callers also gets you early access to now recording episodes. And if you can't afford that, our you know our usual is the Stumpies. Gets you access to membership live streams, uh, Discord, the paid wall and the Discord, uh, some maybe premium membership exclusive episodes. And that's only $4.99 a month. And those are our membership tiers. Stardust, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I, thank I you feel for having me. It was, uh, it was greatly informative. Uh, I, I feel like I, I know a lot more than I did going in. Um, Back we it. just scratched the okay. surface, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I get, I get, like the iceberg. We're only on the tip. Uh, Beckett, yeah. uh, anything you want to add, real quick, before we end? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, right. Thanks. This wasn't a format. There is no format. Please stop saying <laughs> there are formats. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, see, at the end of the format of a now recording show, I always say now recording is always recording. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>